everyone and welcome to Keeping Up with Linda. Today I'm going to work on something totally different, totally out of my league. We're going to work on a medieval costume, that's my goal. I do not have professional training on sewing, so but I think I can do it. So I'm going to start with the chemise and this is what I did. A bed sheet, a good quality bed sheet. If you're like me, if you don't have any professional training on sewing, but if deep inside you know you can do it, try it out. What's there to lose? A bed sheet? Hmm, we can deal with that. So, I'm going to be saving the bottom part, which is actually the top part of the bed sheet, which is, ha, always has the nice finishing on top and the, the aim is already done. So I'm going to be using this as the bottom of the chemise. So. That's done, I don't have to worry about that. These parts here on the side, I'm going to remove. But the bottom, it's done for us. Beautiful. I'm going to fold the sheet in half, lengthwise. Because this is a queen sheet, it'll give me enough room for the dress to have enough material to go around. So now that I have the material nicely folded in half, I'm going to measure. My model needs 115 centimeters tall. So I'm going to measure that and I'm going to mark it just so I know where to cut the sheet. Okay, so 115 right here. And I'm going to use one of these pins to, to mark it. Measure it again, again. In and again so okay so that's gonna be the height of the chemise we're gonna be cutting the two sides of the fabric at the same time we want to make sure that we don't have one side that's longer than the other it's correct over there and all the way up right it's even wish me luck <laughs> So I'm cutting slightly above the pins to make sure that I have enough um, height. Okay, so this part will be used for the, for the sleeves and whatnot, right? So now I'm going to remove the seams that um, the, the bed sheet has and uh, create my own seam because I don't want to keep this, it's going to be too thick. So I'll remove that. It really would work better if it was ironed. Let's remove the pins before we get hurt. Wow. So right now this is all one piece, but I'm going to separate it. I'm going to cut the material on this side. I'm going to separate the front part and the back part because uh, the front part, we want to make it a little bit lower to do the neckline, right? A little bit of a roundness to it. So again, I pinned it not too close to the edge because that's where the scissors are going. All right. Now we remove the pins. So now I have two parts, a back part and the front part. So now the fun begins. No idea where to go from here now. It seems so easy when, when, when I'm thinking about it, but now that I'm actually doing it, it's like, um, yeah, what's next? <laughs> I'll come up with something. So to find out how much I should cut for the sleeve, what I did was I, I used an old blouse and I measured, so from here to here, or from here to here to see how much material I should cut and it's telling me 25 centimeters so that's what I'll do also since this is the front part and we wanted to do a little bit of, um, of a round shape for the for the front for the neck it's gonna be slightly lower than the back I think that some people even leave it at the same um, same height but I'm gonna bring it down by two centimeters measure here gonna mark it with the pin so now 
from the sleeve to there the material is folded I'm just gonna cut this little bit and that will create a little bit of, uh, of a round effect for the for the front part of the chemise so from here I just have to cut all the way to the sleeve done now the sleeve portion I'm gonna cut it as well so from here to there okay let's remove the pin and now let's see what this looks like so that's one cut one opening for the sleeve there's the other one on the other side and I've created a little bit of a roundness for the neck part so same thing for the back for the sleeves 25 centimeters on the back I'm gonna leave the material straight I will put elastic on it so it'll look nice now I have to figure out how to cut the sleeves. One thing I know for sure, they have to match this here just so when I'm sewing, the measurements are correct. So always work with extra material. It's better to have more than less. This is a type of chemise that requires a lot of material because you, you have to gather it and, and create that, that bulkiness, whatever you want to call it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the same 25 centimeters on the sleeve here. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the the body part, which is that right there. So I positioned it here and I measured it. And it's the same thing, 25 centimeters. The rest of the material goes over. This is the part that's gonna go over the shoulder. And then with the elastic, it, it'll be all gathered. So let's see how that works. The sims of the sleeve will be at the bottom. It'll be like a nice flow of um, the sim of the sleeve and the side of the dress going down. So I kind of measured one of my blouses to kind of know the length for, for the arms. So now that I have all four parts cut, I'm going to start sewing. What I have here is the back part and one of the sleeves so I'm going to make a seam right here so I already chose which part of the material do I want on the outside and then we sew it on the opposite side it's looking good already there's a seam right there haha <laughs> now I'm gonna put the other sleeve I don't know if I'm understanding what I'm doing, but um, it'll be okay at the end. <laughs> so I'm now sewing the front part of the chemise to, to the sleeves. I'm just hoping that I'm sewing this right because it's quite confusing. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it inside out. <laughs> well, at least all the stitching was done on one side only, which is good. Wow, this is huge. So it's huge. It's looking like a chemise, all right. I'm hoping that the elastic will gather the material in such a way that it doesn't look so big. So far, so good. So now I have to sew the sleeve and just follow this line all the way down to the bottom of the dress. So again I'm going to turn this inside out to make sure that the seam is on the inside and not on the outside. So the dress is sewn. I need to work on the sleeves, finishing the sleeve over here and the, the top. The gathering of the material now will be the the trick and that's what's uh, gonna give it the final touch I know what I want to do let's see if it works so here's the elastic that I'm gonna be using for the whole thing the effect that I'm trying to get is basically this one here right I'm, I'm already excited about it so what I'm doing is I'm starting in the middle of the back part because I don't want to finish 
my elastic on one of the sleeves or at the front where we might see a seam or something. So I measured the back and it measured 80 centimeters so I'm starting at 40. And now I'm folding about 3 centimeters of material and then I'm actually positioning the elastic here, not on top because if it flips out we might see the elastic so I'm going to put it at the bottom. So I'm going to be pulling on the elastic quite a bit because you know we want the elastic to be nice and uh, stretched. Before I pull I have to secure the elastic here with a couple of stitches otherwise it's going to keep on running away from me. Okay, it won't run away now. <laughs> Okay, so folding my material and pull on the elastic quite hard and stitch. Wow, look how cute, right? This is the effect that I'm looking for and it's working. <laughs> I see. So when we stop, we have to make sure that the needle is always down to help secure the material and the elastic. Okay. This is my chemise that I just finished. I'm very happy with it. It looks good. After finishing the chemise, I realized that the chemise was a little bit too short. So I've decided to add some length to it with this frill that was the bottom of a curtain. Uh, creating this beautiful effect and uh, again inexpensive and voila a chemise is born so now the um, the dress, the actual dress that goes over the chemise, consists of two things. The skirt part and the top part. I'm using bedding again. This, I believe, is a um, comforter case. I mean, there's a zipper and everything. The skirt will be open at the front. So I've cut in the skirt already. I took the measurements of the waist of my model and then I, I tripled that. I tripled that in, in material because we want the the gathering of the material to to be enough to, to do a nice effect on the skirt, right? So what I'm doing is I'm uh, taking advantage of the finishing at the bottom here that's done for me already. And it actually creates uh, weight on the skirt, so which, which is nice because it will keep the skirt down. So another advantage of uh, using a, a casing is that when the skirt opens we have the same color on the inside as of the outside. I need 98 centimeters that's the height 98 and the leftover material seam allowance material I'm gonna fold it in let me just mark here so now I'm gonna do the gathering for the skirt the measurements that I need is 59 centimeters because that's the waist for my model. She's actually 71, but up to here she's 59, and then there's gonna be a 12 centimeter opening at the front. So I've um, measured the string, so we fold it to make it stronger. I'll leave just a little bit of extra for the knot. So all this material now has to fit in uh, these 59 centimeters of thread and what I'll do is I'm gonna fold it in fold it in like that here we go I'm gonna start the process by I'm not gonna do it on the edge right here because that's pretty much where I want the the sewing to go after so I'm gonna do it a little bit away from the edge so you just do like large stitches so that way when you pull you create 
that effect, right? Once I've exhausted all the, the thread, then I know I'm done. <laughs> So I've exhausted all my thread, so I ended up with 59 centimeters of uh, material for the waist and that's what we want. Now I'm not sewing this by machine just yet. I will be sewing it together with the top part and again because there's that, uh, that finishing touch over here, I'm going to be using that <clears throat> as an accent on the waist, so on top of the skirt, so I'll be sewing it right above here and that's when I obviously secure the top part of the dress to the skirt. So I have this whole bunch of material to to make the top part so if it doesn't turn out nice the first time then I have enough material to do it a second time. Alright so creating the bodice I'm going to cut 75 centimeters I don't need that much but for now that's what I'm going to start with and I want to cut my material straight for now. So it'll be 75 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters tall. So again, I'm not using any patterns, so hopefully this will work out. We'll see. 50. And I'll mark it again in the middle. I'm using just a white uh, makeup pencil. Wish me luck. This is like driving. You keep your eye on the road. <laughs> so we're almost done here. So I'm gonna sew along here and I'm going to secure the straps right there. And then I'm gonna join them on the shoulder. Right? I'm gonna be sewing it here. And then, ready. Now for buttons, I found these guys. They're not exactly what I had in mind, but I couldn't find anything else. And now, I kind of like them. They're kind of cute. And since I'm going to use a ribbon to tie up the dress, these loops will serve for the ribbon to, to go through and I think it's going to look really pretty. So I'm on my last one here and then we're going to put the ribbon. This is pretty much done. I'm really excited. So cute. Before we move on to the ribbon, I just want to show you the dress, how cute it looks. This is the, the waist where the bodice meets the actual skirt. Quite magnificent. Now it's ribbon time. Yay! And of course it had to be green. So I'm going to start on top. So I'm going to do a crisscross effect here. Just like in the Renaissance times or Viking times. Trying to keep it straight, it's not that simple. Alright, make a large bow and it just falls down the dress. Oh, I'm so excited to see the chemise inside the dress now. And the moment of truth. Since I already put the ribbon on, I'm just going to dress it up like this. Adjust it here. 
here. Wow, it's so cute. Wow, so beautiful. Look at that. Now, how pretty is this? That's beautiful. Oh my God. I'm so proud of myself. Look at this, guys. Like I said, if you can dream it, you can do it. Just keep trying. It's so cute. I love the outcome. I had so much fun making that medieval costume for my daughter and the outcome was so beautiful that I decided to make one for myself. It feels so good wearing it. It makes me feel like a woman from those Renaissance slash medieval times. It's really amazing. So if you can dream it, you can do it. And again, very inexpensive and it's a beautiful, beautiful costume. I'm just loving it. All right, guys, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep on subscribing and don't forget to keep up with Linda. Ciao!